Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting Tropical Turtle and I'm sipping on some apple spice tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you can find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, cobalt blue, green oxide, Mars black, burnt sienna, which I like to call rust, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, and deep yellow. And of course, you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number six round synthetic brush. And I have a number one round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same type of paint and canvas and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that in and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting our background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are blue, green, black, brown, and white. <laughs> and how I'm gonna do this is I'm going to pre-mix myself three colors. I'm gonna pre-mix myself a color for the water, a transitional color down at the bottom of the water, which will be a greenish color, and then the sand at the bottom of the of the ocean or the sea. So I'm going to use my large brush to mix my colors, but you could certainly use your medium brush if you wanted to. I have pre-mixed my color so you can see where I'm headed and I'll show you how I got there. So this is gonna be my blue for my water. This will be my green transition color and then this will be my sand color. So how I got to this was I took my cobalt blue, I added some green to it, I added a little bit of brown to it, and a little bit of white to it. And then I just started mixing it together. Let me turn my palette so we can see this better. So then I started mixing it together. The blue is very powerful. So you just wanna add a little bit to it at a time and just start spinning it around and adjusting it as you feel is necessary. This is actually a pretty pretty good color for me right off the bat. What, I, what it happened was, was the brown and the white kind of neutralized my blue and then adding a bit of green to it turned it more into like a teal type of color which to me is more kind of a tropical-y type of water. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this color, bring it over to my green, I'm going to add a little bit of green to it and a touch of black, not a lot of black, just a teeny tiny bit of black. So this is going to give me the transitional color from the water behind my turtle down to the, to the ocean floor where the, um, where the sand is. So this is gonna be a greener version of this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna actually wash my brush so I don't have too much of this color on here. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush in order to make my sand color. Oops, I got a little on my canvas already, which is fine. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make myself tan with brown and white. So I'm gonna use some white and brown and mix myself a nice tan color. And then I'm gonna add a tiny bit of my blue, my pre-mixed blue and my pre-mixed green. So what this will do is it'll give me a sandy color 
that is in essence reflecting the colors around it, which are the blue and the green from the, from the water. So this will give me a really nice complementary sandy color to go at the bottom of my ocean. So once I've got that done, I'm going to wash my brush again so I have a clean brush to start the process up at the top. I think actually I need to, before I move any further, make myself a little bit more of the sandy color so I don't run out during the painting process. So before I wash my brush, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And then what I'm going to do again is I'm going to wash my brush and I'm going to start at the top of my canvas. I'm gonna just get this mixed here. That's looking pretty good. So washing and drying my brush. I'm gonna start at the top of my canvas and I'm gonna be using a left to right brush stroke with my custom blue that I created. So left to right brush stroke. This is going to be, oh, I have a little, little fun thing in my paint. <laughs> there we go. Um, this is going to be water. So it can have movement in it, especially since we've got our beautiful sea turtle who is making its way through the, through the, the, the area of this water that we're creating. So I am able to, if I want, use this crisscross type of motion. That will provide me with a little bit of um, movement to the water without doing much to it. We're going to be putting the um, a light source at the top of the water as well. So that will also aid in helping um, add movement to the water. But it'll be your call. If you want it really nice and smooth, you can certainly do a left to right full brush stroke. But if you want to add a little bit of movement, you might be able to capture that by doing this uh, crisscross type of brush stroke. I'm gonna bring this color down a little bit further than my halfway point. So if this is halfway, I'm gonna come a little bit further down than that before I start introducing my green mixture that I did. So this is about good for me. Now without washing my brush, I'm picking up that pre-mixed green color and I'm gonna get this to blend right in with my blue. So I'm putting it down a little bit below it. I'm getting a, a good coverage of going across and then I'm gonna blend it up just a little bit into that bluish color that we have. So you don't really need to do a whole heck of a lot with the green section. It's just gonna be a little smaller section. And then once you've got this on, now I'm not gonna wash my brush and I'm picking up my pre-mixed tan color, my sand color. And this I'm also going to be um, intermingling with the section above it, which is the green. I did not wash my brush, so you're gonna see the evidence of the prior colors releasing themselves into my sandy bottom of my of my ocean floor which is exactly what i want to happen so it looks really nice and natural and that we've got this beautiful um transition and soft colors down in the ocean floor as if maybe there's some little reflective areas or it's taking on some of the color of the of the water itself Again, you might want yours to be really smooth looking. You might want yours to have more blue in it. If I ever want a spot w where I want more blue or green, I can just kind of push my brush a little bit harder because I've got some of it within those bristles. So you can play with that and get those light spots and dark spots and green spots and blue spots to just kind of intermingle with that sand. We are gonna be doing another layer on this sand, so if it doesn't get perfect for you, don't worry about it. You'll have an opportunity to um, make any little adjustments that you want. And then we're gonna be using our piece of chalk for the next step. If you wanna do a second layer on this, feel free to do so. If not, just uh, you put this large brush away, take out your piece of chalk, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna draw an outline for our turtle. I am gonna suggest before you start this step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take that extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer to get it dry that way. So I'm gonna be using my piece of chalk. I'm gonna be guiding you through some markers uh, we're going to connect those markers or we'll connect the dots. We're going to make some basic shapes and by the time we're done we'll have a nice shape that we'll be able to color in during the painting process. So what we're going to first do is we'll start by making what I'll refer to as kind of like a football shape. So I'm going to find the center of my canvas left to right and top to bottom. 
And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up about two, two and a half inches and then over maybe about an inch, inch and a half, make myself my first little marker. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to the center of my canvas and I'm gonna travel to the left. I'm gonna keep going to the left until I'm about, I would say about three inches away from the edge of my canvas. That's gonna be the two points to my football type of shape. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna connect those dots. So I'm gonna bring this up in this type of way. I'm not bringing it up very high. And then I'm gonna start dropping it back down in through here and connect my dot in through there. And then on this side, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down in this direction and then right about here, I'm just maybe a little bit, I might not even be any lower, right about the same um, height as this, maybe, maybe just go a little bit lower, but not much. And then I'll just kind of come back up in through here. So that'll be my first shape that I make. The next shape that I'm gonna make is uh, the head, which is gonna be a, like a square with rounded edges to it. So from this marker in through here, I'm just gonna come up just maybe about a quarter of an inch and then just round it back into the um, my football shape, something like that. And I'm gonna bring this in maybe about another quarter of an inch, something like that, quarter to half of an inch. And then I'm just gonna bring it down in this direction and then bring it back over here and then back up here. So it's really just kind of a soft square with these rounded kind of corners to it. And again, yours doesn't have to be exactly as mine. You can certainly reshape it if you feel the need to. So this is uh, maybe about an inch below where we had the corner. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a flipper over on this side. So I'm gonna travel to the right of my, um, where the point of my football shape was. I would say maybe about three inches to about here. That's where the end of my flipper is gonna go and it's gonna meet this marker in through here and this marker in through here. So what I'm gonna do is from my, um, from my point here, I'm just gonna go up a little bit and bring it back down curved into this central location. And then I'm gonna take it from here. I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit and then I'm gonna curve it back over into here and then just meet it down in through here. I'm gonna make one more line. What I'm gonna do is from here, I'm gonna make a continual line up until I get to like the middle of this marker. What we're doing is we're separating the underside of the flipper from the upper side. So I'm gonna take it from here, bring it up a little bit like that, and then just bring it down in through there. Actually, I think I want it over just a little bit. Let's move it, let's move it over just a little bit that way. There we go, that's good. So now what I'm gonna do is I am going to give myself a couple of uh, flipper or fins or feet, <laughs> dolphin feet flipper fins. Not quite sure what they're gonna, what they're really called, but feet. We're, I'm just gonna call them dolphin, or uh, turtle feet. We're not doing a dolphin, we're doing a turtle. So over here where this little point comes out here, I'm gonna go up from here, maybe about an inch, and then I'm just gonna make myself this little ripply line and meet it back to my marker in through there. That's gonna be one of them on the far side. And then the next one, I'm gonna come in from here, maybe about a, an inch right about here. I'm gonna connect here to here, but it's gonna drop down for this, this flipper in through here. When I do this, I'm not gonna do a straight line. I want it to look like it's kind of wider down at the bottom, and then just bring it back up, maybe with a little bit of shape in through there, just to give myself something that's not just a, a, uh, a flat shape. Then what I'm gonna do is I am going to separate the shell from the main body. So I'm gonna come down from the top of the head, maybe about halfway, right about in through here. And this is going to meet this um, this back area in through here. I would say maybe shy of the tip by a, maybe about a quarter of an inch. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of connect this with a long, wavy type of rounded line, something like that. It doesn't have to be super wavy, just a little bit of wave will give you a good um, shape to it. Now I'm going to put my big exterior leg flipper on in through here. This is gonna be the biggest um, appendage because it's gonna be nice and close to us. So I'm gonna first mark how far down my canvas and how far out I want it. 
So wherever this, uh, your little foot with the tail or the point of your football shape is, if you just travel straight down from, from that, I would say almost about halfway between it and the bottom of your canvas, I'm a little bit to the right of that. That's where the bottom of my um, biggest flipper is gonna be. And it's gonna connect all the way up to the head. There's gonna be like a shoulder type of area here. So this shape that I'm gonna guide you through is a little weird of a shape in through here, but it'll um, help you to get a, uh, an area where we can put that, um, I don't think it's called a shoulder, but the bend in the flipper. So if you find about the halfway point between here and here, that's gonna be where I cross it over and maybe about another inch to here. So now I'm gonna take it from um, this corner in through here. I'm gonna bring it back over this left uh, way just a bit. I'm gonna curve it a little bit in through here and then I bring it down and I'm gonna bring it down to my bottom edge in through here. And you can ripple it a little bit if you want to, not necessary, but if you wanna give it a little bit of shape, that's great. And then in through here, this is gonna be kind of another weird um, ripply type of line. So I'm gonna go right from this area in through here where it meets in through there. I'm gonna bring it down in a curved kind of line like this. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a bump in through there, and then this is where it's gonna cross over, touch this marker, and then I'm gonna bring it down towards my, my bottom edge. And I'm gonna round out this little bottom edge in through here so we've got a curve in through there. Before we go any further, I'm gonna erase a couple of my chalk lines so when we go to paint it in, it will be an easy process. So I took my medium brush, I put a little bit of water on it, and I'm gonna erase a couple of these lines so that way when we go to paint in, we'll have an easier time. So I erased everything in the head. I'm gonna erase this line on the flipper in through here, and then, well, those are the only lines I'm gonna erase. We get to keep all the other ones. So we are going to be using our medium brush for the next step. So do any adjustments you need to on your um, outline and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting in the base coat for our turtle. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are brown, rust, and my sand gray color that we pre-mixed. So I'm gonna be doing just flat colors in these areas that we'll be able to build upon later. So I'm starting with some brown paint. I'm gonna be painting all of my um, flipper legs, <laughs> whatever we wanna call them, with the brown color. This is no fancy brush stroke, just bringing it all the way to the edges of my chalk mark and making sure, if you don't paint all the, um, all the way to the edge, that's okay. You can either erase it with a little bit of water or I'm sure during a future step, we will, we will take care of it. Um, I also wanna let you know that it's okay if this layer is not perfect. This is just a base coat that we're gonna be building a whole bunch of details on top of later. So if you're going about this and you see streakiness or you have the evidence of your background colors um, showing through your paint, don't worry about it because that will all be taken care of later. I'm gonna do the little uh, back flippers in through here with my brown paint. Again, just bringing it to the edge of my chalk, trying to maintain good shape for those um, for those sections. But if you know if it goes awry and you have a little shape that isn't what you expected, just roll with it. I'm sure all turtles have a little variation in the size of their flippers and stuff. So I'm going to do uh, this top portion of this. Um, this flipper over here with my brown paint. We'll do the under portion with the sand color in a minute. But this will, again, just helps us go through the process. And of course, you could do yours with different colors too. If you wanted to pick a different type of turtle that has a different kind of color for it, Sell it for its body and stuff, you could certainly do that. There's lots of different colored sea turtles out there. I'm gonna also do the head with this color, um, but when I get to the area where it meets the flipper, I'll just, I'll just leave myself a tiny bit of the evidence of that um, chalk mark because we've got two of the same color right next to each other. So it, if you lose that line, it's okay. We're gonna 
um, have lots of ways to to re-identify where those two things meet but if you can leave a little bit of um, the chalk mark great so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash and dry my brush I'm gonna be coloring the shell with burnt sienna so I'm just loading my brush with burnt sienna and I'm gonna color in the entire thing with that color so I'm gonna go right up to my chalk mark and again, this is just a color option that I'm I'm choosing to do. I wanted these nice, warm, reddish, rusty type of um, sand tones that I was seeing in a particular style of the um, sea turtles. But there's so many different color variations. They've got you know lots of different design elements that you could incorporate. So if you choose to do another color, feel free to do so. Just pick whatever uh, base tone that you want and roll with it. You can use that as your um, beginning step for it. And then you can build your design work on top of it, you know, with a similar process that I'm gonna do. And then once I've got that in there, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna do these last three sections with the sand color that I used at the ocean floor. So I'm just washing and drying my brush. I'm picking up that tan type of color. So the reason why I'm opting to use this color is one, it's complementary to the sand, but as I build the details on these areas of the turtle, it's going to almost look like the colors are reflecting off of one another. So it, that's a great tip to tie pieces together and especially when you're working in a reflective type of area like water where everything is you know shining off of one another and even though you know your your animal could be one color it's surrounded by the water because it's in water so that water could be reflecting other colors on the animal so that's you know just a beautiful part about nature is everything in the in the color world kind of talks to each other and reflects off of one another and so you can incorporate one color from one area into your other object and it'll tie it all together. And then we're going to be using our large brush for the next step. So once you've got these parts all nice and colored in, you can put this medium brush away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our ocean floor. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm going to use are my sand color. I'll also be using black, brown, and white. And if I want to or need to go into any of my, I might actually go into some of my premixed green and my blue as well. So I'll just call them out as I'm going to use them. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to put a shadow of my turtle on the floor of my um, ocean. So I'm going to be uh, using a very little bit of paint to start. I'm going to start with just a tiny bit of brown paint on my brush so I can kind of lay it out. I want my shadow to be pretty much directly below my turtle. The farther away from the turtle it is, the higher the turtle will look like it's in the water or floating up above the, the floor of the ocean. If you put it really close, it'll look like it's you know nearly touching it. So I'm gonna put it a good distance away. So if I come down here, this is gonna be in sand. So I'm just gonna kind of rub it back and forth, left to right, giving myself what I would think to be is the shadow. So I, I know that the base is gonna be kind of a circular type of object. So I'm just gonna kind of rub in this round type of shape, letting it kind of dissipate out into the um, the sand itself. I've got this flipper that I kind of want to make sure that I've um, told the story that it's there. So something like this would work for me on that one. I've got the head, so maybe a little bump out part in through here for the head. And then I've got this big flipper that's pretty wide and it's pretty close to us. So I'm going to have that flipper 
showing up right in through here off the canvas. So now that I've got it kind of laid out, now I wanna make sure that it blends in with all of the surrounding sand and it looks nice and natural. And if I want any additional sand movement or information, I'll put that as well. I'm also gonna put some extra lightness down at the bottom of my sand so it looks like it's being lit up. So I'm not gonna wash my brush. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna pick up a little bit more brown plus a tiny touch of black paint. Just, oops, I have a little white on my brush too. I don't want that. Plus, um, so tiny bit of brown, tiny bit of black. The trick here is not to have a lot of paint on your brush. And I'm just gonna get these to kind of intermingle, get some um, little bits of darker spots in through here. I want it to really just look like it's merging in with that sand. So in a second, on my dirty brush, I'm gonna pick up my sand color, which is right now. So on my dirty brush, I'm picking up a little bit of my sand color and just getting this to work its way into my shadow. So this way it looks like everything is just kind of working together and it is overlapping one another. The shadow is the, you know, the shadow working into that sand. So right now, a little bit of black plus a little bit of the sand color because I felt like I was um, going a little bit too light. So I picked up a little bit more black with the sand color. And again, less is more. I don't need a lot of paint on my brush. I'm really just going for a subtle type of appearance here and I don't wanna overdo it. So now I'm gonna start just kind of working my way into the rest of the sand. So that way I can have some light spots and some dark spots. I want definitely want some more little bits of movement back here. So I'm gonna pick up my sand color. I think I'm actually gonna pick up a tiny bit of my green as well. So just kind of getting a little bit more activity back in my sand. I'm really just wanting to finish it up. Areas where you um, might potentially bump into your flipper or something like that, just bump into it. We've got lots of stuff to do on that flipper later, so don't be afraid to bump into it in order to make it look nice and natural. And I'm just kind of letting those dark stuff off of my brush in through here. Again, just giving myself a nice natural kind of transition back into the depths of the ocean. So it looks like it's really transitioning well maybe a little bit more of my greenish color in through here and maybe some down in through here. So just whatever you're feeling, maybe I got a little bit in through here. Now I'm gonna pick up brown and white on my brush. because so I want there to be a little bit lighter of um, sand down at the bottom to kind of make it look like the whatever that light source is above is also illuminating some of this sand down in the water, which will help to tell the story of the shadow that we see as well. And I'm just kind of rubbing it on here and making sure that it's doing everything that I want it to do. And you can keep fiddling with this, May maybe let it dry for a minute, step back, see if that shadow is popping enough for you. I might actually make my shadow a little bit darker because it looks to me like it might be a little bit too um, similar in color to the stuff that it's next to, but I'm also gonna right now pick up a little bit of my water blue and in make sure that that is kind of intermingled up in through here. Again, I just like everything to kind of talk together. So if you um, feel the need to incorporate some of those additional colors, go right ahead and do so. I'm thinking that's pretty good. Maybe just a little bit more on my shadow. I just washed and dried my brush, picked up a little bit more black just to get it a tiny bit darker. And then I would just kind of keep playing with it. We are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your ocean floor complete, you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna put our sunlight in our water. I'm gonna be using my large brush. The colors I'm gonna use are my ocean blue and white. And what I'm in essence gonna do is put a big light spot up at the top and through here, and then I'm gonna bring down the beams of light 
and I'll also make sure that my water is complete because I know that I have some areas that look like they could use a second coat so I'm going to use this as an opportunity to make sure that I've got that fully covered and that if I want any more movement in my water I can do that as well. So in this step I'm never going to have a ton of paint on my brush. I'll, I'll start with the light up at the top and then I'm going to start pulling it down. There are going to be areas, especially over here, where I'm going to want that beam of light to kind of travel past or behind my flipper. So what I'll do is I'll either skip it or I might even just go right over it. We're going to, we have lots of layers to go on our animals. So if you have an area where you bump into your turtle or you go to skip it and you've you know, hit it, that's okay. We've got lots of stuff to, to go on it. So I'm gonna start with just a little bit of white paint on my brush, not a lot. I'm gonna pick my light area to be up in this region up in through here. And then I'm just gonna kind of start pulling it out in like a starburst kind of way. So this way it really reads as, you know, kind of illuminating that water. And I like to kind of just get it so my, my brush starts to dry out on me. That helps me to give these long kind of thin type of um, appearances. And you can, again, just kind of bring it down past your, your flipper. That's gonna give you some great dimension on it. And even in through here, I have a very dry brush right now. So that that's how I'm getting these really thin type of transparent type of um, marks. And you can bring it all the way out. And of course, this was my central location. And that's where I'm bringing all of these marks out from. You could, um, if you're comfortable with your paint, you could use a little bit of liquid medium as well. That will give you these translucent marks. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start picking up a little bit of my uh, ocean blue plus a tiny bit of white paint. And I'm going to start to kind of intermingle the two of them. So this way, now I've got multiple tones of this light from above. So we've got some, some lighter stuff and some bluer stuff, and this is gonna give it a lot of dimension as, as the viewer is looking at the painting. But my brightest area, area remains this top area in through here. And then I'm just gonna pull some of these blue and white streaks out as well. And again, bringing them crossing them over my um, my flipper or behind my flipper if I want to. I'm gonna reload my brush with a little bit of that um, ocean blue plus my white on my brush. So again, I can have these various tones of this lightness from my, from my light source. And you can get yours to be as bright as you want. If you want yours super duper bright, feel free to do so. If you want yours, you like the depth and the darkness of it, certainly feel free to just continue to pick up your, your background blue to get it to um, just stay that darkness. And you can have just varying tones of this lightness. Again, I'm bringing it pretty far down so I can make sure that I have um, good coverage everywhere and that that light looks nice and powerful. And then I would just kind of keep playing with it until I feel that I've got it as bright as I want, make sure everything is covered up as much as I want. If you want there to be a little bit of movement in the water, you could always bring in like these little ripples, especially up at the top that will help to sell the story of it being water i'm putting just a little bit more white paint on my brush to make sure that these um, tie in with each other nice and evenly and they've got a nice transition and then just keep fiddling with it and when you've got it into the area that you want you can um, put this brush away we're going to be using our uh, medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this beautiful sun lit water done, you can put this brush away, take out your uh, medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do shadows and highlights on the turtle's body. We're gonna save the head for later so we can attend to that in a more detailed way. But what we're gonna do right now, we're using the medium brush. I'm gonna be using black, brown, um, rust, yellow, and white. And what I'm in essence gonna be doing is I'm gonna put shadows underneath the body. I'm gonna be putting some shadows behind the head. 
some shadows on my flippers, and then I'm gonna be putting some little highlights on my flippers and on my shell. This, in essence, is really um, a step one to give the turtle some the the body some dimension, but I'm also looking to tell the form of these particular objects. We're going to be putting all the decorative elements on it in a future step for doing details, but this is just the shape of these objects. So I'm going to start with a tiny bit of black and brown on my brush at the same time. I don't need a lot, just a little tiny bit. I want the head to have a shadow underneath it that's going to blend into this body. Same thing with this arm in through here, the arm, the turtle arm in through here. I want it to kind of blend into the bottom body. So I have black and brown on my brush right now, and I'm using a very carefree, light, um, sketcherly type of brush stroke to get this to blend in a little bit with this chest area. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of rust paint right now to get this to blend in just a little bit more and give it a little bit more of the, the color aspect from the top of the, um, of the turtle. And then I'm just going to pick up a tiny bit more of that black and brown and make sure that it um, blends in down at this bottom part. And I'm just, I just added a touch of water on my brush as well, and now I'm just kind of rubbing it in so it blends right into that bottom section. I'm gonna do the same process to this little piece in through here. So a little bit of black and brown on my brush at the same time. This is gonna give me a little bit of a shadow underneath the, the shell as it's meeting this um, soft side of the turtle underneath. So a little bit of black and brown, and then I'm gonna just rub it out. I'm gonna pick up a touch of the burnt sienna in a second as well, but just wanna get this rubbed out before it dries too much much on me. That's looking pretty good. And then just to um, hold true to the authenticity of that color, I just picked up a little bit of burnt sienna. going to just dabble a little bit in through here just to give myself a nice transition in through that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of uh, black paint on my brush. A itty itty bitty bitty bit. I'm going to put a tiny bit of a shadow on this flipper from the um, from the shell. So just a tiny bit of black paint on my brush is giving me this great little shadow underneath here. Wiping my brush off on my paper towel just to get the, um, the quantity off so I can blend it out a little bit. I'm gonna do the same thing over here on this little flipper in through here. Just an itty bitty bit of black paint is gonna give me a nice shadow right um, next to the, the shell itself. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little shadow behind the head. So I have a touch of black on my brush. I'm also picking up a little bit of burnt sienna. So I have black and burnt sienna on my brush. I wanna put just a little bit of a shadow behind this head in through here and then just kind of blend it out. So I've got this little bit of a darker area behind the head. Just making sure I've got it blended out like that. There we go. And then I also want to put a little shadow underneath here. So I'm just going to pick up a tiny bit of brown and black and just going to put a little shadow underneath here. Oh, I think I need a little bit more black on my brush. A little shadow underneath here and then just get it to blend out into that um, tan type of color, so something like that. Now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put a highlight on some strategic areas. So I definitely wanna highlight on the top of my shell. So this is where I'm gonna go for rust, yellow, and white on my brush at the same time. I want a real bright highlight up here on the top of my shell maybe a little bit more yellow so it's not so pink. There we go. So nice bright highlight up on the top of this shell and it doesn't have to be perfectly rounded. You can certainly have a little bit of wobbliness in it. And then what I'm gonna do once I've got it on there, I wipe my brush off on my paper towel, pick up more rust paint and get it to blend down with that rust paint. So it will blend into the base color of that shell. And it doesn't have to be a smooth blend because we're going to be adding a bunch of um, details on top of it. This is just getting you getting the dimension on that on that shell. I'm also going to put a tiny bit of a highlight on the edge of the shell in through here. So again, just a little bit of that um, rust yellow and white, just giving me a touch of a of a 
highlight on the edge there and then you just kind of keep fiddling with it until you've got it blended as much as you want. And then I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to be putting a highlight on a couple of these body parts on the flippers. So wash and dry my brush. I'm going for brown and white are going on my brush at the same time. This is going to give me a nice highlight on the edge of these um, of these flippers. So my light source is up here up at the top of my canvas so I want to make sure that I've got the lightness that um, I want on the edge of these or on the top side of these flippers so just put a little bit more white paint on my brush something like this and then just giving myself also the kind of the edge of the um, of the flipper where it kind of um, comes over on our side so that's just going to give me a little bit of volume on there it kind of turns down in that direction but that lightness at the top helps. And then on this one over here, so brown and white are on my brush. My, I want this to look like it's popping out to me. And this is what I'll call the elbow or the shoulder. I don't know. <laughs> Wrong terminology, I'm sure. But it's going right in through here where the, where the flipper is going to come popping out at us. So I want a light spot in through here and coming down in through here. So I just brown and white to give me that light spot in through there. It's going to kind of come back. We're going to put more details in through here, but this is just kind of starting the process of that, um, that piece of body that um, comes out from the turtle shell. <laughs> I just picked up some more brown on my brush just to get this to blend in a little bit with the neighboring brown and then same thing right here just get it to blend out a little bit into the uh, neighboring darkness of the of the sh of the flipper and then we will like I said be adding more details onto these parts but that's uh, oh maybe a little bit of a highlight on this back flipper in through here so I still have just a little bit of brown and white on my brush, just a tiny bit over here on the edge to give us that um, that little bit of additional dimension on it, and then I can just blend it out with my regular brown. And then we're gonna be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got these highlights and shadows done, you can fiddle with them all you want. You can smooth them out or just keep them as, as bright as they are. And then um, you can put this medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint our cute little turtle face. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are black, brown, white, burnt sienna or my rust color, and I think that's it. And maybe some of my sand color too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself some markers where I want to have my eyes and my nostrils and my mouth. I'll do that with black paint and then we'll work all the details around that. So I'm going to start with a tiny bit of black paint on my, on my brush. So I'm going to go just about dead center left to right on my, um, on my square circle type of shape and I'm going to go up just a little bit. I'm going to make myself two little nostril holes <laughs> that are really close together, maybe about a quarter of an inch to an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch away from each other. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the right of that, about halfway between the nostril and the end of the head, somewhere right about here. That's gonna be the bottom corner of my eye. I'm gonna give myself a, a long pointy oval type of shape for the eye, something like this. It's going to go all the way to the edge of the head on the right hand side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a similar process on the left. So I'm going to go from my nostril hole to, oh, this is maybe a little bit further to the left. I think my head is tipped a little bit. So somewhere maybe in through there. And then this one, I'm going to do the same thing. Only I got it. I'm seeing part of the shape of the eye on this side. So this one's a little bit, my head appears to be a little bit um, crooked, I guess, <laughs> but you could have certainly the same exact size eyes from one side to the other. But if you want your head to look a little tipped, you can do you know something similar to this where they're not exactly symmetrical. So I've got that. Now I'm gonna um, add my mouth area. So a little bit of black paint. You could also put some water on your brush to give you nice fluid lines. I'm going to go about halfway between my nostrils and the bottom of my neck somewhere um, 
in right right around here is working for me and then I just kind of dip it down just a little bit to put that little pointy part on the edge of the um, mouth part and then I'm just going to bring it in a little bit of a curved line towards the edge of my head and maybe thicken it up a little bit as it hits the edge of the head that way it looks like it's got kind of um, the ability to open and close and we've got a little bit of shadow underneath it so I'm going to do the same thing over on the other side just bring this down over here with a little bit of a curved line to the edge of my head and then just bring it out and maybe widen it just a little bit at the bottom gives it a little bit of shape and it gives it um, that kind of shadowy type of look now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, wash and dry my brush I'm going to start making the markings on the face so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using um, brown and white on my brush at the same time or if you wanted a more um, solid color, you could take brown and white and just make yourself a little bit of a light tan color. You could use your gray um, that you use for your sand to do this as well, but whatever works for you, just kind of some kind of light neutral color. I'm gonna start making some markings. So I'm going to make myself a line between my nostrils. I'm gonna make myself some marks. Think of this as just a like a decorative kind of, um, design element for the um, for the markings on this particular um, I almost called it a frog <laughs> this particular turtle of sorts so something like that and then I'm going to give a connecting line up towards the top of the head if you can curve it a little bit great if not no big deal then I'm going to give myself some light lines coming down in through here these are going to be some nice markings on the face I'm, I'm still just using that light tan color and give myself from this corner of the um, of this marking I'm going to give myself a big curved line up towards the top of the head do the same thing on the other side a big curved line so I guess this would just be a nice continual curved line in through here that would work and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself some markings around my eyes so I'm just using this light color to give myself this kind of swiping um, curved line at the top part of the eye something like this and then I'm going to also do the same thing at the bottom side of the eye so I again just that light gray right now and I'm going to give myself these curved lines that kind of intersect towards that nose area and I'm not coloring it in hundred percent this is just giving me almost the wrinkles underneath the eyes you're almost kind of giving this circular type of pattern around the eyes something like this and then I'm going to just pick up some more of that tan give myself a couple of um, more markings down the side of the face so just a couple of little streaks or stripes in through here then what I'm going to do is I'm got this tan on my brush I'm going to just give myself the, a little bit of a highlight down at the bottom of the chin to get this to have a little bit of a luminescent value as um, from the ocean floor picking up brown paint now to get that tan to blend up into where the bottom of that lip or the bottom of the mouth is now I'm picking up a tiny bit of black paint just to get it to really work well just getting these to blend so I went from light at the bottom to dark at the top where it meets that mouth area and of course you can finagle it as as much as you need to then on the on the face area I'm going to start just decorating it with some colored pattern but I want to make sure that the dark brown areas are fully executed so I just put some more brown paint on my brush to make sure that I have a, a nice good coat on here and up at the top of the head you can pick up a little bit of your um, tan color to put a little bit of a highlight up there if you wanted to add a little bit more um, sh um, highlight from the light source like that and then down on the on this face just making sure that I've got everything colored in before I start adding my fun polka dots and the little shimmer in the eye I just picked up some more brown paint so all I'm doing right now is in these little sections that have the outlines I'm just rubbing in some brown paint to make sure that I've got them um, fully colored and if you wanted them to blend in at all with that um, with the um, tan color you could pick up a little bit of it and just kind of get it to blend along those edges I'm going to put a little bit of that tan at the top of the lip 
two or this part, of, I don't know if it's a lip or <laughs> the top of the mouth. So that'll get it to protrude a little bit in through there. And then I'm gonna also use, by just picking up a tiny bit of white paint to give a little bit of a shine in the eyes. So a little bit of white paint, just a little crescent and a dot and a crescent and a dot. Now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna put the polka dots in colored spots. So I'm picking up some rust paint and I'm just gonna add some nice decorative elements towards those eyes. These are just rust color, little polka dots in between these stripes. And then if you wanted to, you could certainly add any more. I'm gonna actually pick up a touch more white paint to put a little bit more highlight on this stripe in through here so it looks like it is um, popping out just a little bit more and then you just kind of fiddle with it so if you wanted more brown or more or more of the cream color you can certainly do that if you can get this front area to pop out a little bit more with a little bit more lightness feel free to do so I just picked up a little bit more of that tan color and that'll get that nose area to pop out a little bit more and then you just kind of keep fiddling with it we're going to use the same brush for the next step so once you've got your adorable little turtle face all nice and done, you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're going to finish our flippers. So I'm gonna use my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are, I think I'm gonna use that tan that I made for the face, which was the brown and the white, uh, burnt sienna, brown and prob maybe a little black too if I need to. So what I'm in essence gonna be doing is making a squiggly line type of pattern for um, the markings on these uh, pieces. And then I'll be using maybe my burnt sienna to put the colored part within some of these um, areas that we're gonna section off. So I'm putting my tan color on my brush. I'm gonna start with these guys over here. I'm in essence gonna be doing a bunch of little squiggly lines to section off some, some um, areas. But when I get to the edge of my flipper, I'm gonna do more curved lines in order to explain to the viewer that this is a curved type of object and that we're seeing the, um, the contour on the edge like that. So as I go to this darker one back here, I can pick up maybe that tan plus maybe a touch of brown because it's in a darker area. So if I um, don't want it to be as bright, I can certainly use um, a little bit of brown. And I just need to hardly do anything on that one back there. So I'm gonna do that same process to all my flippers. So I'm just picking up my, my tan and I'm going to give myself some, some kind of round curved markings along the edge. And if it's not light enough for you, certainly add a bit of white paint because as I get up into this highlighted area, I might have to elevate my color with a little bit of white so you can see it on top of the, um, the other color that we did. And then as I go back in towards these, um, the backside of this particular flipper. I'm really just kind of making these squiggly lined sections. You could really get systematic with your pattern or you can just be carefree like I'm doing and giving yourself this, the, the illusion of these um, sections of color that we're gonna be putting in in a minute. So I'm gonna travel over to the next one over here on the right hand side. So wherever I want that edge to be, I'm gonna give myself these curved kind of lines. Again, that will tell the viewer that this is in fact the edge of it. And then I can just kind of squiggle in these little um, sections that I'll color in in a second. So let me just kind of get, a, that was a little bit too light <laughs> sometimes we make marks that are a little bit too light. So just bring in some of that brown back. And then what I'm gonna do now is since I have this light color on my brush, I'm gonna make sure that I have enough kind of wrinkles in through here and then that my transition from these flippers into the head is everything that I had hoped and dreamed it would be. And I think I need a little more separation between my head and this part here. So I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of black paint just to make sure that this transition works the way that I want it and that I can see my head 
um, in its own independence aside from the the flipper itself so this black is helping me to just kind of separate those two areas maybe put get this to recede a little bit more and get it to kind of blend in with the neighboring areas and same thing over on the right side of the face I'm going to put a little bit of black paint on my brush just so I can make sure that this um, this flipper doesn't um, look like it's merging into the head. So just these little tweaks can really make a big difference when it comes to the overall finished product. Making sure that you've got areas like this that need attending, make sure that you attend to them. Even right in through here, I've just got the remnants of the black on my brush. I can use it right now to make sure I had a couple of spots that weren't finished being painted. So I was able to just kind of rub in a little bit of um, watered down black paint to fill in those little spots. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to put a little bit of burnt sienna on my brush and I'm going to give myself some fun little marks in between my, um, in between those lines that we just made. And you can use uh, burnt sienna, brown. I'll probably use a little bit more brown on this one in through here. So I'm just going to um, I'm not really going to do the edge of the flipper, but I'm going to do this flat side of the flipper and I'm just kind of spotting in some burnt sienna. Right now I'm going to pick up some brown to give myself a transition maybe to some darker spots. You could certainly pick up a little bit of black if you wanted more drama as they're going farther away from the edge in through here. So you could certainly do that, but I'm thinking that this is working out for me. Maybe a little bit of black right in this crook of the the arm in through here. Just again, giving myself that little bit more um, dimension in through there. So transitioning from the light here to the dark back there will give you that um, real great depth perception. And because I have black on my brush, I'm gonna wash it again and I'm gonna put out some new uh, rust on it or burnt sienna and I'm gonna give myself some of these spots on this one. And because this one's getting really light over here on the edge, I'm not gonna do too much on that edge. I think actually I wanna um, bring back in some of that tan color because I, I don't like this spot right here. <laughs> so just bring that tan, just kind of dull it down a little bit and then maybe a little bit of brown for this back side over in through here. And then we're gonna use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your flippers or your fins or your legs or your feet done, <laughs> you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready, whoops, get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our turtle shell. I'm gonna use my small brush. You could certainly use your medium brush on this depending on how carefree and um, detailed or non-detailed that you want this to look, but I'm gonna do a similar process to what I did to the um, flippers is I'm gonna be using that tan color. I'm using my small brush, the tan color, and I'm gonna do kind of outlining the sections and then I'll be using rust yellow, brown, and white to put some detailed kind of um, textured type of a pattern on those sections. So I've got my tan on my brush and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to outline my sections. So I'm gonna have a big one up at the top. Oh, I think I need a little more white in this upper section so we can see it. Uh, there we go. So we can see it on top of that highlight. And I'm, I don't like to do real firm lines when it comes to a pattern such as this because I want it to look nice and organic. I want it to look like, you know, a machine didn't make it. Like, I just want it to look like Mother Nature made it. So as I'm going through this, you'll see I really like to use my sketcherly lines. Um, I'm doing this big section coming down the side and through here. This is going to end up coming in through here. You can add a little bit of water to your brush as you're doing this so that way you've got, um, or liquid medium, so you've got some fluidity to, to the paint. I've got a couple of little sections up in through here. I'm gonna have these little sections coming down the exterior part of my shell and I'm giving again a little bit of a curved line on these particular ones so that way again it 
informs the viewer what what the shape is of this of this object and maybe I'll have um, let's see maybe we'll have one coming in through here and then a couple going in through here maybe we'll have another one back there and then maybe just a couple coming down in through here so that's looking pretty good to me um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding all of my information I really want the top to be pretty bright and my my textured kind of pattern is going to be kind of stripy, but I can also add some dark areas as well. So at my top, I'm going to start with my, my top area with white and yellow on my brush and giving myself this real kind of bright stripiness to this, to this top section. And again, I want it to look nice and natural, so I'm going to be using these carefree brush strokes. I still have white and yellow on my brush, so I'm going to incorporate a little bit of that within some of these other sections. It doesn't have to follow any specific pattern. You can have one side lighter than the other side. You can have these um, ones down on the bottom section of the um of the shell kind of going at a sideways type of a of a stripe and the ones at the top can kind of be pulled down so you can you know use the uh you know use the visual information that i'm giving to you for um putting these directional type of markings on but don't feel the need to follow it exactly again there's so many different variations in the in the, this style of um, of turtle so you can really kind of be carefree I'm still just using yellow with a little bit of white more yellow on my brush than white but you could certainly um, mix up your colors if you if you wanted yours to be a little bit more vibrant than mine I'm putting the brightest part kind of at the top of these sections whereas these ones I put it a little bit at the right side of them and again just kind of picking up my yellow and white giving myself maybe a little bit more on this back side and through here and again yours can be really vibrant putting more white on my brush to get this top one really want that to be nice and nice and bright and to carry those real vibrant colors picking up some more yellow so right now just kind of going back and forth between white and yellow in order to get these bright areas on and in a second I'm going to incorporate some of the um the rust and the brown and maybe a little bit of black to add a little bit more dimension so that's looking pretty good to me I'm feeling like I've got some good um, textural pattern started so now what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put a little bit of brown and black on my brush to give myself um, more dimension in these um, sections so a little bit of brown and black on my brush and I'm going to go alongside my light line so I'm just kind of nearing that light line the the tan line that we put in place and add in this bit of darkness next to it so what this is going to do is it's going to add this kind of drama to each one of these sections i think i need a little bit more black paint and you again it doesn't have to be as strong of a um marking as i'm doing but this is going to give the visual um separation between them and it's also going to give um more color variation so just a little bit of black and brown on my brush right now to give myself a little bit more separation between these um, sections more kind of on the opposing side from where the where you put the light so if I put the light up at the top I'll put the dark down at the bottom if I put the you know light over here I'll put the dark over here so you can certainly follow kind of that rule if you wanted to um, but again not necessary this is just adding a little bit more information to them and then what I'm going to do is I'm picking up some of my burnt sienna to make sure that everything kind of talks well together that burnt sienna is going to really be kind of your connector color I think maybe so I'm going back to black and brown. I want a little bit, a little bit more separation in a couple of these other ones up in through here. So wherever you feel that you want them to, you know, look like they're a little bit more separated, you just need a higher contrast in those colors. So if you, you know, either make them lighter or darker. Now I'm going back to my burnt sienna <laughs> and adding a little bit more of that stripy kind of 
decorative element to these sections up into here. And then I would just keep fiddling with it, playing with it as much as I want to, um, to get the um, decorations the way that I want, adding a little bit more burnt sienna and yellow up on this one piece up in through here, right behind that head, because that's getting illuminated by the by the sunlight as well. It has a shadow and a highlight on it. There you go. And then keep fiddling with it. We are going to be using uh, the same brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm going bottom left on this one, and I'm gonna use brown paint. So I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be. Is totally fine. It's your painting. You get to sign it however you'd like. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very adorable sea creature. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.